I got you. No request should be coming in. I need to clean the fight, you know? Shut up. Hey, fuck you, Cruz. All right, bet. All right, it's announced. <laughs> yeah, so we can start. I just had to get some cinnamon toast. My fault. Are you good? You want to start? No, we can, you can start. All right, so I'm going to start off with my premise. Okay. All right, so I got Broly beating Jiren off of feats and statements. Just overall, like narratively speaking, he would be stronger than Jiren. Okay. You can post and scan chat, by the way. All right. Just say like hashtag scans under your general. Oh, yeah. Um, if somebody can record, just send it to me after the debate because I know somebody's going to record it. Or if you have OBS. Hello, you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just post your scans and scan chat. Okay. All right. So I know I, okay. So I heard you, I saw your first video, right? And you said that you said Jiren wouldn't be considered an enemy, like off of Kanji's. Yeah, sure. Okay, so, and you said, I also posted another scan that's saying Jiren is a foe. If you want to bring that one, I can, but I'm pretty sure you know. Okay. Okay, so, and then you said that was, like, you should have been opponent for Jiren? Yeah, it's because, like, it's because in Japanese kanji, when they translate, because obviously it's original source material, techie can translate to foe, opponent, or it could just be enemy, it could be all these different things. But consistently, the other or the latter half of the translation, Jiren is always referred to be a martial arts opponent, a rival, and things like that of the sort. So to assume it's referring to a foe and trying to say it's synonymous with the English word of enemy would be incorrect. All right, so, and then you said you would change that to opponent, right? That would be a more correct definition would be opponent for him. Not inherently. Um, I just said it would be, you know, more consistent for it to be like a martial arts opponent or a rival in this case. Whereas right. for other characters like Brawly, he wasn't seen in the same light. As term in terms of a totality, I'm not speaking in for uh in reference to Goku, like how Goku feels about Brawly later into the movie, or him saying like, "Oh, he doesn't think he's a bad person." None of that can like uh coincide with the totality, fact that he, he would be an enemy. Be, yeah, like, to, like in terms of a totality, he would be an enemy. Well, like in what way? Like throughout the whole movie. Yeah, so like okay, yeah, I'll explain it. So throughout the story at the beginning of the Brawly movie, um, first of all, Brawly comes to this planet. And the sole purpose of what happens at the initial scene is that Broly is attacking these sands, right? He charges at these sands and he's looked at to be this random person who's attempting to harm these people. Also, the context is Broly's aligned with Frieza. Frieza is definitely looked at to be an enemy in this case, seeing that they know Frieza's trying to take the Dragon Ball. They don't know what for what reason, but they know Frieza is evil by nature. So the whole narrative is coinciding with the fact that Broly is on Frieza's team. Whereas in Goku, the opposition is going against these evil forces and Brawly just happens to be on them, which is why it makes sense for Goku to later say in the movie, oh, I don't think you're that much of a bad guy. And it would be consistent with the fact that initially he was seen to be like some type of enemy or throughout the movie because he's fighting on the wrong side. So, OK, so I have a problem with that because throughout the entire movie, Broly was like being portrayed as like somebody who's not really being on the bad side it's more trying to portray him as like somebody who's fighting under control of people that are trying to make him for like bad like personal gains basically like broly himself i wouldn't see him as an enemy maybe the whole like arc right. of what broly's in like the whole so, situation that broly's so, in okay you fine with me intersecting or yeah, yeah go, go ahead all right so if your son goku right in the broly movie and yeah. 
another person comes with the most evil tyrant in the universe or somebody you know to just kill random people take lives he's portrayed to be immoral but tear to be like this anti-villain and all these different aspects to his character and he pulls up on a ship with this guy who automatically starts attacking you brawley was also wearing this armor and these things as well as the fact that he looked like an opposition to goku so you can't tell me that Goku doesn't view Brawly as an enemy when he just charges at him and he's working for Frieza. That's obviously the context of it. Now you could be like, well, he doesn't seem to be like one based off of his like behavior and his mannerism. But right off the bat, the first thing he does is he works with the Frieza force as well as the fact that later we see Brawly charge and attack and then Goku learns his character through fighting. Because that's the only way Goku learns people through fighting. That's Goku's whole narrative. That's the whole thing that's been portrayed since Dragon Ball. The whole nature versus nurture aspect to his character. And all those things that are present within Goku's philosophy. So right. for Goku to later determine what type of person Broly is, it's fine. But that doesn't necessarily change the fact that, yo, you're still an enemy to my nation. It's like, sim- it's like if you found a good soldier in a war, right? He's still yeah. an enemy, <laughs> like at the end of the day. So... Yeah. Okay, so, but that would be that would be off of like Goku's interpretation, correct? Um, no, because the statement that says Broly is the strongest enemy is an editor note. It's also like a. But there's a also statement. there's also one that calls him an opponent as well. Which Just one the are strongest? You to? Uh, I posted it in scans. Oh, you have the synopsis. Uh, yeah. Do you have the raw for the scan? Uh, I could find it. Yeah. Because obviously, if you have the raw, and depending upon the translation that they use, certain translators use like an inherent bias when translating kanji to where they can sign with one interpretation, but that one interpretation can have three other interpretations. That's why yeah. I gave you like techie, for example. And like, obviously, Brawly is referred to be an enemy multiple times and portrayed to be an enemy. And then in this one case, they're like, yeah, no, he's an opponent. Um, it wouldn't necessarily coexist with the fact that they don't view Jiren typically as an enemy, whereas Broly is typically synonymous with an enemy in Dragon Ball. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that Broly in terms, like, I'm not calling Broly, an, I mean, not Broly, Jiren. I'm not calling Jiren an enemy by any means. Okay. But what I'm saying is throughout the, like, narrative of the show, like, of Dragon Ball Super, like, calling okay. him an enemy would be, like, more aligned with the narrative of the show. Like, he's the antagonist, oh. what I'm saying. Who, who, you're talking about Jiren? Yeah, Jiren himself. Okay, no, okay, uh, I disagree. So uh, a perfect example is like, have you watched a regular Dragon Ball? Yeah. Okay. So do you know how like Goku had a fight against like Tian Shan in the tournament? Yeah. Okay. So it's very consistent a lot of the times that because we're taking in perspective of Goku, who's a protagonist in the Shonen world, he obviously has to fight people because that's a huge aspect of his character. So a lot of the times, the people that he's fighting are oppositions. Now, there's a difference between sparring against somebody and then being in a tournament against somebody. You could also look at, like, Goku enters a random tournament, and you could say, like, oh, at the end of Z, Oob is an enemy to Goku because he's a, you know, he's a rival opponent, right? You could also look at that to be an enemy. Um, in this case for Jiren, though, the whole narrative... That's what you, 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 you cut out. This character perched in this. This. Oh, okay, one second. Hold up. Yeah, like you cut out. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, you good now? Yeah, yeah. So I was saying for the Goku aspect of his character, right? It's like yeah. consistent for Goku to push this narrative of Goku wanted to test himself, break his limits. That's the whole reason that intro was given in the beginning of Dragon Ball Super for the tournament. The whole narrative there is Goku having this limit breaking power, and the best person to test that is Jiren. Somebody who achieved power through sheer, like sheer training, sheer hard work, perseverance, and all these different aspects to his character. So Jiren could still be fighting Goku or being adversary, but Goku's not looking at him as if he's like some type of evil or he's aligned with this force or narratively it's not. It's just that Jiren has to fight to protect his universe or whatever goal he has. That's all it is. Yeah. I mean, okay. You could say the same thing for Broly, like in terms of like Goku when he was fighting. When he was fighting, after he fought Broly, he came over to the planet and was like, oh, yeah, I thought I, was at my, I thought I was at my max, but you showed up and showed me that I'm not strong enough yet. Like, I can still get stronger. Okay. Right? Do you, do you, do you know the problem with that? What's up? The, the issue where it says, yeah, Broly is the strongest enemy is referring to Broly when he's attacking them. It's referring to Broly fighting. It's not referring to the end. There's no way you could prove that. The, all the statements that reference Broly's power and all the mags and all the guides and everything is all referencing Broly attacking. If that's why you see Broly in the picture. and It says, yeah, strongest enemy. And this would be when Broly is considered okay, an wait. enemy. 
Also, so you're also saying... wait, 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 one second. Also, we know it's the case because at the end of the movie, when he says, I was sure of my own power, but I found out you were a lot stronger. When is Goku sure of his power? And then he concedes to the fact that Broly is stronger than him. So right before fusion. So all these are referencing different aspects of Goku's character and how Broly's antagonizing and being a direct enemy to the cast of the show. And then later, that's when you see some type of bond that could potentially be something else. So, well, you mean, you've also seen it when he was in Super Saiyan God and Goku actually saw Broly. Like, you could see Broly, like, almost breaking out of the control, sort of, his rage and, like, try to, like, I don't know, reason with Goku, sort of. Like, Goku could see it himself. Like, even when, that was, like, literally right after he attacked Vegeta. So it wasn't too late when Goku was thinking, like, oh, yeah, this dude isn't an enemy. Like, I'm pretty sure he saw it in the beginning because he also it. told... Uh, go ahead. Okay, yeah, go. I was gonna say that wouldn't directly be referencing what Goku's talking about because a statement says Goku is sure of his own strength, and then Brawly proved himself to be stronger. So the aspect of where Goku is sure of his own strength should be where Goku thinks that he's strong. There's also I don't know if you're aware of the guy that says like Goku is approaching the levels of a god of destruction for the Brawly movie. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah, yeah, I know um, about that. But yeah, yeah, the whole narrative here is that Goku thinks that he's at this level after the T.O.P. to where he's contending with these characters. And then when he meets Brawly after Super Saiyan Blue and he doesn't go into Kaioken, the argument to be made narratively is that Goku knew he wasn't stronger and that's when he wasn't sure of his own strength anymore, which is why he demanded to do fusion. That's why he makes the statement at the end. That's the only thing that should be implied due to the implication of the statement. Okay, so let me think. So when Goku was saying that he was stronger, or like Broly was stronger than him, right? Yeah, it's it's after he says, "I was sure of his own strength." You can only be sure of your own strength if you think that you're stronger than somebody. And Goku was stronger than Broly the whole time until he lost in Super Saiyan Blue, and Broly got stronger. Right. So when you're saying like Bro, so that was the only implication of like Broly being. So everything before that, you're saying Broly was the enemy, and then the statements just cut off. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying the statement arguably cuts off at the end when Broly realizes or they realize that Broly isn't an enemy because Broly is not with the Frieza Force anymore. He's not aligned with evil. Why wouldn't he be and with the Frieza Force? He, he was. That's the whole point. Frieza picked up Broly, took him on his ship. So to a story right. narratively, the implication is that he's with the enemies. So he's an enemy. It's like the famous saying goes, you're either with us or you're against us. There's all these things that are like, uh, you know, kind of reference in this. Okay, but like, yeah. okay, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. All right, so, but my problem with it, like, okay, so I see all the, the scans that call him an enemy, regardless, right? Okay. What I'm saying is, like, Broly throughout the entire movie, like, before we met Goku, right? Just uh -huh. narratively speaking, like, besides what Goku thinks and Vegeta thinks in terms of, like, how, Go how Broly is attacking them and how Broly is perceived, like, in the beginning, like, Broly's being built up, like, if anything, like, I would see Broly as the main character of the movie, which he probably is, but... What I'm saying is, like, Broly was built up to be, like, somebody who being controlled. Less than an enemy, more of, like, a, I don't know, a slave? Isn't that what they called him? No. Something like that. Way. You could argue that later. That's why I said the whole narrative is literally just portraying that Broly was some type of enemy that worked with Frieza, charges at the Saiyans, and starts attacking them. And Vegeta's even questioning, like, yo, what is this? Yo, this is a Saiyan. And then they're starting to, like, figure out what's happening as time progresses. And then they realize that, you know, Broly's kind of, like, not that bad, or at least Goku does. But I'm going to post this statement in scan chat so you can see what I'm referencing. But for this statement in particular, um, let me scroll up in my gallery. Yeah, so for this statement in particular, the way that it's spoken of in context, you can see it. It says, frankly, the enemy Goku and Ko are up against in this movie is the strongest. This is not speaking in perspective of Goku, whereas in you have the Dragon Ball trailer... And it says, yo, hey, me. Uh, and it's like, hey, it's me, Goku. Or you have, yo, I was sure of my own strength, which all these are perspective statements. But this is spoken of in third person or an outside source that is narrating the story, saying that Brawly is the enemy of the story. So it's only reference into where you, he's the enemy and he's not the enemy anymore. So it's, it's pretty clear. Can you look at this scan saying that the enemy, even if we want to call it, let's say we call Brawly an enemy, correct? So okay. this way we use Broly as an enemy. Can't we just say that Broly is the enemy and they're saying that he is the strongest, like even though he's the enemy? No, because the statement is strongest enemy. So they're in conjunction with each other. Nick, one second.
استش All right, my fault. I'm bad. Yeah, so I was saying, no, it doesn't work that way because the statements are in conjunction with each other. Like it says, strongest enemy. For example, it's like saying somebody is the best basketball player. That's like you taking basketball player away from the context of the statement and then just being like, yeah, they're the best in general. And that would okay, work like, because it's only applicable to the statement. Okay, so I'm reading the scan, right? Yeah. And it says, frankly, the enemy Goku and Vegeta are up against in this movie is the strongest, yeah. right? So if I take the analogy you made, right, okay. it would be the best ba the, the basketball player that whoever is going up against is the best. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't that mean out of everybody that everybody else, wouldn't it be also include everybody else they fought prior? Because it's not saying the strongest no. enemy. It's not saying no. strongest enemy. The, it's saying the, the reason, enemy is the strongest. Uh, okay, let me, let me explain it like this. This probably be easier for you. The reason why this doesn't, hey, it doesn't equate to what you're saying is because First of all, like every statement is context deprived or context deprived. So in this way where it says, frankly, then it says comma, it's continuation of a statement. So it says, frankly, comma, the enemy Goku and Ko are up against. So it's referring to enemies. That's why it says enemy. And then it says strongest in this movie. So it's referencing that out of all the enemies that they're up against or they've fought, this is the strongest, which is fine. Because it wouldn't contradict anything. Um, all the enemies that they fought before were arguably weaker than them. They never fought any like enemy that I think would matter towards this Jiren versus Brawley debate. So yeah, it's just so referencing it in context with the situation so, of everybody that they fought. So, yeah. so you're saying the statement would refer to like Merge Zamasu instead of Jiren? Um, that's that's fine. Merge Zamasu is like uh, I'm assuming we're operating. He, he, was under, the like, strongest, the movie. he was the strongest before Jiren, I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think Jaren slaps Merge the Masu, so... Right, I know that, but what I'm saying is, like, the in terms of what you're saying here, that they're saying the strongest enemy, and you're referring to Jiren yeah, as not it, the it, enemy? It, it depend, yeah, it would reference that... It would Broly reference the next strongest. strongest... Wait, it would reference that Broly is the strongest enemy that they fought. Um, and if you want to make that inclusive to Merge the Masu, or you want to include Merge the Masu under that, you could... But like I said, if you're attempting to use this for like the, for the PV guy that I posted in one of my videos, it wouldn't matter because you can both be a rival and an enemy at the same time. But in this case, or a, you could both be a martial arts opponent and an enemy, right? But in this right. case, for Brawly, it doesn't work. Like they're not mutually exclusive, which is what I was trying to point out to you. So would it not be the same for Jiren as well? To be an enemy and a, and, a, and a martial arts rival? No, because... Whenever those statements are made referring to Goku, Goku is a person that is typically viewing him to be this. There is no statement that actually refers to him as being an enemy narratively, um, as well as the fact that if you think that that's the case, then you could say everybody in the T.O.P. was an enemy. Whereas in everybody in the T.O.P. was just fighting to save their own universe or for some aspiration that they had. Um, and it was like without choice or without uh, granted warning, right? So you're not able to just assert the value that every single person in the T.O.P. is an enemy to Goku uh, rather than like Goku is looking at, you know, them to be opponents because it, it's a tournament of power. It was supposed to be a tournament, which is why the gods tested out the whole big aspect of here is martial arts, technique, skill and all these different ways to win. And if you look at it actually narratively, I don't know if you remember, but before the tournament of power, Goku talks to go on. And the whole narrative there is like Goku is finally trusting his son more than he ever has in the history of Dragon Ball. He's trusting him with the like the I don't know like the peace of the universe to stop it from being destroyed. He wants him to be the team leader. There's all these different aspects to Goku's character that is introduced in Super, and then he says, "Yeah, you know, I want this to be a ten v ten battle, make it fair, et cetera, et cetera." So it's definitely treated like a tournament, like the Budokai's back in the day. All right. Um, so uh, we could just go. You, you want to go to the next point? You could, um, yeah, I mean, that's fine. I can go over like Jiren or like how powerful Jiren is, yeah, yeah. So, um, Jiren, right off the bat, 
we already know Jiren is stronger than Beerus. It's pretty blatant. So I'll get the statements that I'm referencing. So <clears throat> here. The first one is this, which a lot of people are familiar with. I'll post a collage of them since scans shut. The first one is this. It says, I dare say this power feels different than anyone we've ever faced. You can argue that includes Merzamasu and other beings, etc. It doesn't really matter for context. But the important thing is the statement that Whis is quoting, where he references what he said on Earth before the tournament, that they're stronger than a god of destruction, right? Now, yeah. the issue with this statement, um, or at least implication-wise, is that Jiren is implied this episode to be holding back power. Because yeah. Belmod, yeah, you see Belmod behind him. We see this consciousness thing. And he's like, yeah, show them Jiren, crush him, and show them this power. So this is a suppress Jiren on episode 102, like 109, 110. And Jiren is still arguably above these characters at this level. But I would simply say he's above a god of destruction at his full power. That's what I would say, to be modest. Okay. So, yeah. so in, your, in your video, right? Okay. I think you were saying that when Goku, you said that Goku has a benchmark for Beerus, where Beerus, where Beerus stands in strength. Yeah, right? sure. And it was that you, know, you said, yeah, yeah, yeah it, well, it's based, it should be based off of the statement that he gets from Whis. We know it's not off Battle of Gods because yeah, one yeah, Battle yeah, of Gods yeah. movie, yeah, you know, the canonicity aspect, mm -hmm. as well as we know it's not from the anime because he never fought Beerus at full power. So it should be all these different things that he's heard of how strong he thinks Beerus is in his head. And this should be a comp like a, I don't know, a composition of all these different statements and things that he's heard from multiple characters up until the tournament to refer to how strong Beerus is. So okay. that, I feel like that's how you should be able to get a gauge for what he's referencing. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong when I'm saying this. So you have Beerus under suppressed Jiren, correct? Beerus, no, um, not inherently. I'm just going to be modest, like I said. I'll just say Jiren at full powers above Beerus, which is fine, okay, so because he has multiple... He has multiple limit breaks and multiple transcendences of power since that comes. Okay, so if Jiren at full power would... Jiren at full power would be Beerus. And then you're saying that Broly would be, like, relative to Beerus? Um, no, not inherently. Because whatever he's comparing Broly to as a benchmark, you could argue is based off what he heard on all these different statements. Because that's when the statement initially comes out um, in reference to this Jiren. So again, this should be the power that they're talking about that is so forsaken or at this level of Beerus or beyond Beerus or whatever. There's also this, which I'll post in context for you. Let me get it for you one second. Uh, let me scroll down. Uh, do, 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 do. One second. Let me get the raw scan for you too. There's also this. What's the end scan shot? It's loading. There's a scan right here that references Jiren's power. And then right here in this scan, it basically implies that Jiren is already like uh, matching a god of destruction. This is not even a full power Jiren. So then the statement that we get after this, when it's referring to him being stronger, should be Belmont releasing his power. So, yes, Jiren completely at full power should body a god of destruction. There's also multiple PVs, guides, and statements that I like post in context. But, yeah, that's, that's basically what I'm saying for now. Then he gets multiple levels stronger after this, of course, through breaking his limits. Okay. Hold on, let me read this really quick. And this is the FPG and I'm referring to too. So yeah, let me let me lock the chat one second. Bro, oh, perfect. Sees me in a debate. He's asking about what's wrong with you. Oh. 
Oh, that's crazy. Niggas really be eating glass and shit. Like, oh god. All right, all right, I got it. All right, but all right. So, let me think. So you're being modest, saying that at Jiren at full power would beat Beerus. Like would beat Beerus. Work. Yeah, you Jiren at full at power. Full. Yeah, Jiren like, at full power should beat Beerus. Jiren at suppress should be able to rival Gods of Destruction's power. Um, and that's the thing. Doesn't I it just, say? But wasn't the one that was they were stating that the suppressed Jiren was over it because it was saying in the scan that the rumors are true. No, this yeah, this is the statement. So whenever we says yeah, the rumors are true. Um, there exists a mortal that even a god of destruction can't defeat. That's in reference yeah, the, to that the suppressed Jiren. Jiren. Suppress. But the right. issue there is that doesn't necessarily have to mean that Jiren is stronger than the gods there. It could just mean that Jiren right there, while holding back, is relative to the gods or is able to match but the wouldn't gods it be, in power. If we Unless sustain the rumor... Assert, if, like, if you want to assert that it makes Jiren stronger than the god while suppressed, like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not really going to help your case. But I'm saying, like, you know, for a low ball, it could also just be that, yeah, the gods can't defeat Jiren. He can't defeat them. It could just mean that he's on par with the gods. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying, like, when you said Goku's, that's where Goku's benchmark is. That's why it wouldn't make sense. Because if they're saying that the suppressed Jiren was under, oh no, the suppressed Jiren is over Beerus, it wouldn't make sense that that's where Goku's benchmark was after hearing all those statements. They're saying that the suppressed Jiren is what? Stronger than Beerus. Or That's why like, I said it yeah. could be equal. Like it doesn't have to be stronger. He said it was true that there's str that you have no mod over here. Where it says no, I said the statement where it says I'll repeat it again for you. Where it says it there exists a mortal that even a god of destruction can't defeat. It does not necessarily mean that Jiren is stronger than the gods of destruction. It can also just mean that the gods of destruction are equal to Jiren, or he can't defeat them either. Because all the statement implies. Is that the gods Wait. of destruction can't beat Jiren? It doesn't imply that the gods of destruction would lose to Jiren. It could be a stalemate for all we know. Okay, so what, do you have Belmont over Beerus? Um, I think Bel like Belmont narratively is above Beerus, yeah. And didn't Belmont himself like like basically say Jiren is stronger than him? He won't lose. Yeah, him? but the the Jiren that should be stronger than Belmont is the Belmont who's at full power. I mean, is a the so, Jiren that's so at like, full power? My fault. But that wouldn't make any sense because when he said that, it was suppressed Jiren. No, it's because he's mentioned him to use more power. That's the statements, which I'll pull out for you. One second. Here you go. Um, go through my gallery. There's this. And there's this one. And then there's this one. Three statements. Yeah, so these are all different layers of Jiren's power that are shown and personified throughout the story. So Jiren uses more power. This is, again, like around the time where Jiren starts to power up. Also, we see like Jiren take on the, the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken times 20 Goku, the Vegeta as well, 17. And we see Jiren start to use this aspect of his full power. And then everybody is saying, yeah, his power is increasing. Now, this okay. hand at the bottom where he throws that punch at him, it says, yeah, Jiren is literally throwing this punch. He exerts a force beyond the gods of destruction and slowly overwhelms Goku. And that's where Goku like drops a transformation and he throws that punch past Goku's head. And again, this is just a hint of Jiren's power. So every time Jiren uses his full power or a hint of his full power, we see this red glowy aura or this flame around him where we see it increase drastically, which even happens at the end after he limit breaks. So. Okay, so you're saying this at that point alone, that was when Jiren was surpassing Belmod? Yeah, I think that the statement where Belmod says that it got it like our Jiren is stronger than him is just in reference to Belmod uh, saying a full power Jiren is above him. I don't think narratively it's like a fair assumption to assume that a holding back Jiren slaps all the gods of destruction. I don't think that's a fair narrative assumption. Okay, especially but do you because think that holding, especially because that holding back Jiren was literally relative to a Goku that still wasn't on, you know, Beerus's level. And there's multiple guides talking about Ultra Instinct that then refer to these layers, as well as a statement where it's like Beerus is questioning if UI or this UI Goku is stronger than him. So yeah, it doesn't make sense narratively for suppressed Jiren to be above the gods. It makes sense for a full power Jiren to be above the gods. Okay, so 
when okay but goku doesn't know this himself though right when you said the statements he's making these statements and he's thinking the suppressed jiren that he heard would be stronger than beerus yeah goku goku would know how would he know that yeah the reason why goku the reason why goku would know is because goku knows that this statement is applied to jiren and he knows that jiren is holding back in context which is why the first time that they fight on episode 109 Goku is trying to get Jiren to even move or even take him seriously, which is why he uses Kaioken times 20. And then Whis literally confirms and everybody reaffirms, yeah, that is Goku's full power. And Jiren is just toying with him. So we know that whenever Goku heard that statement, he can't think that this character who's toying with his full power is beyond Beerus level. He obviously thinks that this character is showing for a hide in some of his strength. And we know that Super Saiyan Blue, Kyle Ken times 20 Goku still was not Beerus' level before the tournament. Yeah, so they- but okay, so the reason I think Goku, like, didn't know about the benchmark or, like, know that Jiren's full power was, like, okay. later in the tournament is because when he was making the Spirit Bomb, didn't he say before he threw it, like, don't regret giving me time to do this, implying that Goku thought the Spirit Bomb would be enough to beat Jiren? No, he not entirely. A- I'm so saying, but, like, whenever- if- Okay. Whenever, whenever Goku charges the Genkidama or the Spirit Bomb within context, and he starts getting everybody in the universe's power, and he says, like, don't regret me doing this. Um, from Jiren's demeanor, we know that Jiren was holding back the whole time and not taking him seriously. So Goku saying, yeah, don't regret it, is saying, you know, don't feel bad or, you know, don't regret what you're doing in this case. But that doesn't necessarily indicate that he believes the Spirit Bomb would defeat Jiren. You can say that he thinks it'll be enough to do something. It could also just damage Jiren, right? That's fine also within context. That yeah, but he was... That doesn't necessarily equate to a full power Jiren, which we have multiple statements for. And I'm going to put it for you uh, within, so you can see what I'm talking about. But You can post it. You can post it. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> yeah. This is the translation for the Ultra Instinct uh guy that we see pop up and then i said yeah meanwhile according to this even beer says ultra and sengoku might be stronger than him possibly aligned in the next episode and all these things are indicated um this is referring to an omen one goku yeah yeah which okay, is so- why it makes sense because omen one goku is fighting relative to this jiren who was holding back in power and then that's why jiren should be saying yo is this guy stronger than me it would also support the fact that i was saying before where we know that Jiren's statement about being a mortal, even a god, can't defeat doesn't necessarily mean that Jiren is stronger than a god. It can just be that Jiren is relative to a god. So Beerus questioning if UI Omen, who is relative to this Jiren, is stronger than him actually makes so much sense narratively, as well as the statements and guides backing it up. So, yeah, but off of the back up to the spirit bomb thing, right? Okay. So when he threw the spirit bomb, you're saying it would like it doesn't mean that Goku wanted to beat him with that. You said what happened? You said that Goku's attention couldn't, like, not couldn't, but, like, it possibly couldn't have been just to defeat him. Like, it probably could have just damaged him. You said what happened? Like, when Goku threw the spirit bomb, you're thinking that the attack could have just damaged him, and that would have been Goku's plan, just to have um, it damaged him. That attack where Goku says, don't regret it. Goku has also said, like, like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to mean Goku thinks he can defeat Jiren with the spirit bomb. Oh, yeah, but the but mad, it his, uh, it's his trim card. One, one, one second, one second. Okay. So the spirit, con- like the spirit bomb or the Genki Dama is typically Goku's trump card, right? And from what he's seen from Jiren's power, he's saying, don't regret it. We know Goku doesn't know Jiren's full power. So how can yes, Goku think it. this? Okay. So how can Goku know that this spirit bomb would defeat Jiren? I mean, Goku's had it like plenty of times before that he thought spirit bombs would be enough to kill somebody. I seen with Frieza. He also okay. thought the Goku, about Goku Frieza knew how enough. strong. Okay, that doesn't work because Goku knew how strong Frieza is. He didn't know. He did. Goku on Namek fought Frieza, and he knew how strong Frieza was. I don't know where you're getting from that. He didn't know. Like I don't know where you're getting that from. The full, the full extent of Frieza's power. Which, which, which Frieza are you referring to? Are you talking about the okay, so he threw the he threw the spirit bomb like fifty percent Frieza. Are you referring to the hundred percent that he chose later against Super Saiyan? No, I'm talking about the 50% that he fought and threw the spirit bomb at. So the Frieza that you're referencing doesn't change the fact that he knows his power. He doesn't know but, Jiren's power. That's that's a but he, Okay, so point. he does know a good amount of, not maybe half, but he knows a good amount. And he can make a rough estimate of how strong Jiren would be. How? Like, okay, that's like saying in context, 
Goku fights Beerus, right? And then at the BOG, or like you use like the BOG art, right? Let's just say Goku charges up a spirit bomb or an attack, and then says, Hey, I don't know how strong you are because I can't sense the limit to your power. I have no clue where you're at, but I'm just going to assume that this attack should be able to take you out. And that literally makes no sense within the context that... because Goku has to be able to sense their power. But in the beginning, Goku was testing out Jiren's energy, correct? Um, testing out no, how strong not... Jiren was. If, if anything, if anything, you could argue, if anything, you can argue that Jiren was testing out everybody else. You could argue Goku wanted to see it, but Jiren didn't acknowledge Goku until much later. That's why throughout the tournament, Jiren meditates, or we see Jiren have these key barriers up, or we see all these different forms, or uh, Jiren using these abilities, and only when somebody interests him does Jiren choose to move. Like, he does against uh, he does against Kale um, in her Berserker state, he does that against other characters, or other people that he feels like will be a threat, or whenever... Uh, Goku pulls out Omen 1. He's curious to see the extent of a Saiyan's growth. There's all these different indications. And Goku just wants to fight Jiren. And if you remember, I'm pretty sure during the earlier episodes of the tournament, like episode 105, uh, 104, Goku is trying to reach Jiren or even come in contact with Jiren. And he can't because Jiren doesn't even want to acknowledge him. So, <laughs> yeah. But um, in the system with that. In episode 109, he was also saying, like, what's it going to take to get you serious? Yeah. Right? Testing out his strength. Basically trying to bring yeah, that, out his full that, that power. Like, also, that, that shouldn't help you, though. That should also just, like, support what I'm saying even further. Because that means Goku knows that Jiren isn't serious. And if anything, if we're being realistic here and we're to make a valid assumption using Occam's Razor, or just any assumption that's valid, is... That Goku knows Jiren is holding back. He wants Jiren to get serious and he wants to see this power that supposedly a god of destruction can't defeat or supposedly is above a god of destruction or whatever it is. Which is why, whenever I'm saying for the Broly argument that you're attempting to use, Broly has no quantifiable strength in comparison to Beerus, except for the fact that, hey, what is Beerus's level before? And all these indications that we have for an Omen 1 or a Jiren who's holding back are representations of around the power that Beerus has, where we have nothing to support the fact of him actually being definitively above a Beerus. Okay. So, he was, so Beerus is basically saying Omen 1 Goku is weaker than him, right? Or like he's questioning it. And I'm saying, I'm saying what? Oh, I'm saying I'm that Omen three. I'm in Omen three for that scan. My fault. <clears throat> I was eating, and I was like, I just posted the scan. I thought I posted the Omen one one, but yeah, that was the Omen three. It, it doesn't matter within context though, because the Omen three scan, uh, Goku would already be multiple layers above Beerus, or arguably above Beerus within power. Hold on, hold on. I can I can explain that for you if you want me to as well. <laughs> Hold on, hold on really quick. Mm-hmm. all right uh wait so you said you explain that what do you mean oh uh, yeah you want me to explain it why yeah why like, omen three okay yeah so whenever ui omen fights jiren even if jiren is suppressed and he hasn't released all his heat or used his full power yet we have multiple indications for jiren actually being stronger than what is shown so the statement with belmont is also applicable to much later um we know that kefla 
is literally using this power and this energy that they're seeing is arguably above Omen, you know, Omen one Goku, which I'm pretty sure you're aware of the argument for that. Unless you want me to go into detail. Yeah, I'm aware. Okay, yeah. So Kefla is above Omen one Goku pretty blatantly. And then we see times where Vegeta with his final flash, despite fighting Topo, literally while Goku was fighting Kefla in UI Omen 2, Vegeta thinks that this final flash attack or this final flash attack is portrayed to be above an Omen 2 Goku and Kefla. Because Vegeta actually thinks that he's able to take out Jiren with this level of power based off of what he's seen in perspective, as well as the statements that reference the mass amount of power that Vegeta is immaculating during the scene. So there's there's multiple layers as well as levels that we see characters are able to compete with these Omen level transformations. So again, it can't be referencing a a hidden power where it's a press jeering for matters. It would be referring to a full power jeering who is going all out. And that full power jeering completely shit stomps and slaps up Goku and Kyle Ken times 20, 17, and Vegeta much later. So yeah. It's pretty blatant that the Jiren they're referring to that is stronger than the gods is just a full power Jiren. Um, there's also these statements which I just posted in the chat that reference like uh, this 110 Jiren. Like, yeah, I sense a far higher power from him. Meanwhile, Jiren appears to be. Okay, all right. Yeah. There's a lot of more things, uh, you know. I'm just reluctant to not like posting on like giving out my scans, man. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> so But I mean, yeah, it's pretty blatant though. Um and then I I could definitely get into like how like Jiren later upon ripping his shirt and actually utilizing like this hidden potential Vegeta even references like yeah he's going beyond he's releasing like this hidden power within himself that is limit breaking almost in like opposition narratively to like Goku's ultra instinct and they both start releasing this heat and then Jiren is able to completely overwhelm this MUI Goku as well as MUI later overwhelming that Jiren and then for multiple levels, they go above each other and overwhelm each other on multiple occasions, despite surpassing Beerus already. So they, they already fight multiple levels above Beerus, while as for Brawly, he's just unquantifiably comparable to Beerus. Okay. Yeah. I mean, do you agree to that? Yeah. Okay. So are we done here? Or Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right. <laughs> Oh, good debate, bro. Yeah, good debate. Um, I'm going to. I'm trying to figure out what I should do with. Let me see. Someone said Brawly isn't comparable to beers. I'll go because I got to slap up everybody else that thinks Brawly beats beers. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and clap this now. Everybody can wild out in the below. The VCs. One second.